Hey guys, it's Matt, and welcome back to another video on the Predator map. Um, it's just me this time because I was going to ask Seto, Seto Sorcerer, to come in as well, but I'm assuming over in America, at this time of me recording it, I'm assuming they'll all be asleep over there, and George's out at the moment, so it's just me. But um, I just want to show what we've done basically because I think the most the most recent vi video on this is um, Seto's video with the one where I was the creep at the start, and um, that was a bit outdated now because the redstone design that Seto came up with, which was that one over there, I've now put into the map here, and with a bit of tweaking, it works a lot better than my old design, which I'm really pleased about. I've extended it as you can tell; it's one big, long, massive like buffer now rather than the small one and i've added a few extra things and also improved a few extra things so if anyone if any of you have watched that video and you remember that if you fall down there but two people did it at once there were skeletons in there that killed you i've actually changed that now the way it works now is instead of getting teleported to there after you die you get teleported in here instead which is a load of tripwire and then that teleports you into there and then into the kill box so that registers that you've been killed and then you get put in the kill box now the reason this is here is because the reason the skeletons were there is if two people died at once they would go they fall in at the exact same time one person would get teleported but the other person would get stuck and then of course the skeletons would just kill them again and drop them back in again what this does is instead is if two people fall on here then it triggers the um, tripwire which turns this torch off and what this then does is it's a clock and it goes back and to slowly and then the command block over here that teleports you has a radius 6 so it teleports a random play in here into there and over there so it does one person then loops back around and then the next person so say five people could die five people could all die at once and they'd all be put into here and then it, they'd just be put through one at a time and that fixes that problem. And I think it's just a little bit better than using skeletons because it's all redstone then it's all sort of like hardwired and I, that's just a better way of doing it. And also as well another thing that I've changed over here is when the predator was when the predator killed everyone the redstone usually when the person died when the person gets killed the redstone advances one more like it unlocks briefly and then locks again so it lets the redstone get closer and closer to the end. However, when this lights up, of course, it triggers the rest of it. The game ends. However, this is still lit up then. So the buffer still has a bit of redstone in it. And it usually, what what we did before was have another pressure plate and then a random person gets teleported to it and then back again. Just to like run the buffer through once more. That turns out to be a very easy fix. When this is left on, it ends the game. But also, the redstone comes up here this time. Turns that off, which retracts this piston. Which actually just unlocks it. And when that unlocks, it turns off, and then this just this just extends again. So that was a pretty simple fix, and that works a lot better there. And also, as well, this stone area is... There was another problem I spotted with the design. But, well, not actually the design, it was just this wasn't part of the design. The, de the design was all about being able to count how many people had died. But if the predator died before everyone had been killed, of course, if they killed the predator, the other outcome... Then they would be the, everyone would be teleported and the game would end. But the problem with that is that the buffer would still have redstone inside it, and I'll show that in a second so we can see how it works. It would still have redstone in there and it'd mess up the next game as well potentially. So that was also another pretty simple fix. Basically, is this here, and what this does is when I turn this on, like this, that retracts, but it also lifts up every single piston except for that one, but that doesn't matter because if there's redstone here anyway, that would automatically sort itself. So that didn't need to be done, that's completely self-contained. But what this does is it unlocks all of these and that just lets the redstone run forwards. Oh, and that's why this is locked as well, actually, sorry, so that the redstone doesn't carry on. Basically, when all those get lifted up, say like there's some redstone here, that would, ca that would feed through and then just fizzle out there. Now, the reason this is here is to stop any current going through so say like for some reason this wasn't locked so redstone could go through it thinking about it now that probably would never happen but you know it's better to be safe and it doesn't actually do anything harmful if some redstone got through it what would happen is is the the predator would die and it would say the survivors win however if this redstone then fed through the buffer and then back over here again through there it would then say the predator wins and would kill everyone else again i mean people would still say no the, the survivors win and that'd be fine but it's just you know it's a bit annoying really so that's what that does is it just stops any excess signal going back there and saying 
crap, basically. So those are the only changes. It's a really great design. So again, thanks to Seto for that. The old design it was came out to about here, went all the way down there. That's not part of it. Ignore that. That's that was for the that was for a secret projects. But that's yes, you may have heard of it. I don't know. I can't remember whether he said it or not. But forget that. That's nothing to do with it. The old design came out to about here anyway, and that's just a lot smaller and a lot better. So I'll show that in action now because I'm it. There was a I couldn't get it to work for some reason. I copied Seto's design completely. I'm sure it was identical. And it wasn't working for me for some reason, and I don't know why, but you know, it works now. And I can't remember what I changed, so we'll just go with that. So, so let's say there, there are three plays in the game. So we'll select that. Oh, and also as well, if you were to select more, it'll default to the lowest one. So three will override the five, so this will cl technically class as three players. So we'll turn that off. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to become the Predator, because I'm the only one in the game. So there's a countdown. I'm not sure if we showed that. I think we did. But anyway... I'll become the predator. So what I'll do is I'll just game mode myself, and I'll fly out, so I can show the actual map. So we'll have to wait for the countdown to go. Oh, and I forgot we need to ch change back this other command box. So I'll do that now in these twenty seconds. I do believe it's that one. Of course it isn't. That one. There we go. Game. So command block output false. So that basically you won't. Apart from like the predator will be released, it won't show all the teleports and stuff. So. That's better. Although there's no redstone flowing to that, so that won't actually update just yet. But anyway, I'll let this finish. I'll get away so it doesn't give me any stuff because it's all proximity detectors now. Okay, so let's see. Um, down here, all these, since I've selected it to be three players, it lights up all of these then, which retracts all these pistons, which means when the first bit of redstone first comes through, it'll go all the way up to here, and now these two are locked. So if you think about it, there are three players in the game. One of them is the predator, which means he needs to kill two people. As you can see, there's two repeaters here that are locked. So when he kills one person, so when one person dies, they'll spawn in here, they'll get teleported to there, they'll get teleported to the kill box. So we'll jump into here, if I can get in, there we go. They'll teleport me there, it'll record that I got killed, and they'll put me in there to wait. Now if we come back over here, you'll see now that all this is turned off and the redstone's advanced one more tick. Now if we do it again, if I kill myself, I'll just jump in here this time. Then that's recorded that two people have died, and says the predator's won, then everyone will just fall to the death like that. And that's basically the whole point of it, really. It's so that in the kill box for the humans, there isn't just a button that people can press. Because people will press it. People are assholes like that. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. So that's what this machine does. And also as well, the reason those are there and the reason that's there is because... Um, Seto had another idea to make it so that if people actually join the game whilst in progress on a server... People could press the button, change stuff around, and that would be annoying. So what we're eventually going to do is make it so when you press the start button, it turns that off, like that, and it brings those up so you can't get in. And similar over there as well. It's not fully wired, as you can probably tell. But basically the map's pretty much finished. It's still, we're still going to test it a few more times with like eight or so people, and maybe have another game with everyone after Minecon. But there you go. Can't press the button then. And that's basically it for this video. So... Um, I keep thinking we've made loads of videos on this, but this is actually only the second one. The other one was our just our poor attempt at explaining it, where we didn't actually explain much at all. And then Ant Venom put his video up, and we didn't realise that he was going to, so that was a bit of a shock. Um, so we didn't really explain it too well, but I think we'll probably do one of those later on, maybe as a third one, when this is when it's the final, final one. There's still a few things we want to change, like what weapons and stuff people start with. They're thinking of giving the Predator like grenades and stuff, like in the Hidden with like instant damage potions and I don't know, just basically buff them out, make it a bit more interesting and maybe have stuff in the gate in the map that you can get. So that'll be pretty fun. But other than that, um, I've rambled for too long. So I think I'm gonna cut the video off here and I'll see you in the next video.